Hello everybody, welcome to Little Fine Art. In today's video, we are going to be talking about psychology and how that community doesn't deal well with the paranormal. So first, I want to start off by saying, do not use this video as a replacement for your doctor whatsoever. Do not do it, please. This video is just based off of my opinion, and I also want to say that I by no means know everything. I am still learning what it is to be a medium and learning about the paranormal. I am by no means an expert. I am just sharing my experiences and my thoughts of the matter. So without further ado, if you're new, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. So let's crack into it. Psychology. So one thing that, you know, when you are dealing with the paranormal, especially in your home or in the workplace or whatever, the first thing you should always do is try to debunk, you know, what is going on. Uh, and by doing that, you normally would just, you know, look around, see what is causing, you know, the noises that you're hearing or hallucinations you were, you know, experiencing. So always check with your doctor, make sure that you, you know, your vitamins and uh, all that stuff are good and that, you know, you're not having any side effects from medications and whatnot. Always get that out of the way first during your debunking. So and one of those things that, you know, is important is maybe seeing a health professional that deals with mental health. And again, by no means, do not ignore the advice of your doctors or therapists or psychiatrists, psychologists, and all that. So what I'm here to tell you is just things that I've noticed. And if you didn't know already, I actually went to school for um, sociology of social deviance, which is like criminology, but more of the behavior aspect and theories of behavior and less law. And I also minored in psych. And, you know, being in this community, I have noticed that people in this field don't do well with the paranormal. They, you know, stick to their scientific method, which is very understandable because it's logical. Because, you know, they're always trying to, you know, come up with theories and experiments. Sorry. They come up with experiments to back up their theories and then they use that as, I guess, fact. Obviously, using that method makes some more sense, right? I think it does anyway. But the problem is when they can't repeat or, how should I say this? If they can't come up with an experiment to come up with the result they want, they, you know, don't really see it then as fact. So if it's very difficult to get evidence on the paranormal, well, then it's hard to believe in, right? I mean, I guess that makes sense. But the thing is, there is evidence and a lot of them just don't want to look in the right places or they're not trying to because in their mind it's fake anyway so if you believe something to be fake why would you waste the time that's a problem because just because you can't replicate that experiment to get you know the answers you need doesn't mean that it's fake you have millions and millions of people that have paranormal experiences every day and they share them. So why 
doesn't anyone believe them? It's like, I don't know. And, you know, it's really funny because a lot of people believe in a god, right? But if you believe in a god, why wouldn't you believe in the opposite? Like Ed Warren famously said, you guys, you know, swear your, I don't know, swear your hand on a Bible that, you know, believes in a god. So why wouldn't you believe in the opposite? Or something like that. And he actually said that in The Conjuring 3, and that was a real quote by him. I kind of just paraphrased it a bit. But it's true. So why aren't people believing in it? Is it because a lot of them haven't had their own experience, so they just see it as fake? Is it because of movies and TV that, you know, say or swear that they have proof, but then they don't believe it because they just think it's added in for entertainment purposes? Or like, have shows been caught lying about, you know, having evidence of paranormal stuff. So it's kind of a big problem, especially on TV. And I'm not saying Ghost Adventures does this all the time, but one of the members of that show, I don't remember who it was. I want to say it's Nick Groff, but I don't honestly remember. He admitted in an interview saying that you know, some of the evidence that they catch on film was actually faked. And so, if you're caught doing that, all it does is give a bad rep to those who claim to have experiences. And because he said that, he got kicked off, so, you know, why would they kick him off if it, you know, wasn't true? But then you have shows that actually don't fake their content and everything that they show is real. Now, I don't think, I don't know if Ghost Adventure still does this, but they, you know, the person who said that they faked it didn't fake it in the beginning. He admitted that in the beginning seasons of the show, they didn't fake it at all. But once they got the views and they needed more views, that's when they started making it more dramatic and faking the evidence. Now, I don't think, well, I shouldn't say I don't think they're doing it in the newer seasons. I don't know. I don't watch all of the seasons. What I can tell you is all the episodes that I've watched, I've always had a negative paranormal experience afterwards. I usually just get attacked by a demonic entity or a negative entity because, I don't know, it's like when you read about something or you watch something that is based off a negative entity that is real, they know you when you're watching or reading. They just do. So, yeah. And if you're faking shit, that just pretty much tells everybody that everyone else's experiences are probably not good or real or valid and that's not what you want to do. The point is to provide real evidence to showcase what is actually going on. So what's the issue with psychology and the community that surrounds it? Well, a lot of them, because they use scientific method, can't replicate a lot of the paranormal situations that are going on or things that are there are things that are easy to replicate are just I don't know other explanations are used because there could be so many explanations if that makes sense And I noticed, too, that, you know, when people go through and try to debunk and, you know, they can't find the source of the thing, they just rule it paranormal, but then you have, in psychology, 
they like to throw around like, oh, I can't think of the word. I'm going to look it up in my phone because I know what it is. It's in my notes and I can never pronounce it unless I read it. I think it's anthropomorphism. Yeah, that's what it is. So anthropomorphism, what is that? That's basically personifying like objects and things, giving them human qualities. So things that are not alive, you're giving them human qualities. And so they say that if, you know, you can't find the source or you, I don't know, you just don't know what it is. Uh, people are quick to blame things that they cannot see. And also that when bad things happen, people are looking for something to blame because it just helps them process what's going on and it makes it easier for them to deal with what's going on. So anthropomorphism. Then you have the whole, um, I can't think today, when you have chemical imbalances in your brain or brain misfiring. They like to throw that around. Now, I'm not saying that it's impossible because, you know, mental illness is kind of popular. I mean, not by choice, but it's everywhere. So it is very easy to say, oh, side effect of your drugs. But that's why you need to go to your doctor to be able to, you know, check all your levels and stuff to make sure that isn't the problem. Um, so like chemical imbalance in the brain because you have a mental illness. So like schizophrenia, sometimes bipolar one and two um, personality disorders can come across, especially like medications and when you go through your manic phase and your depressive phase, you know, sometimes it can cause hallucinations. But typically there's a difference between hallucinations caused by a mental disorder or medication versus a paranormal phenomenon, right? And usually, so like schizophrenia, for example, there are more symptoms than just hallucinations there's a whole lot of symptoms, and I think you have to have, like, four or five out of the symptoms for them to classify it as schizophrenia or something else versus a paranormal phenomenon. And paranormal phenomenon, I mean, if you have a mental illness and you're, I don't want to say the word crazy because... That can be offensive to those that are actually suffering from mental illnesses. But if you're having some kind of misfiring going on in your brain, most times people are not going to question whether or not they are sane, right? So those that typically do question like, am I crazy or am I going out of my mind? not trying to, you know, be disrespectful and using those terms, but it's a popular phrase that is used between people. I know it because, I mean, I've been in that community anyway, but people that question it typically turn out to be the ones that are the most sane and healthy, right? And those who don't question it have a higher likelihood to not be okay, if that makes sense. And so, I think that in the psychology community, they need, well, they should not just rule it off of one symptom because 
again, mental illnesses typically have more than just one symptom versus, you know, you know, like, I don't know, like hallucinations that can be caused from a whole range of things. But again, usually mental illnesses that have hallucinations as a symptom have more than just one side effect. Especially like when you're having side effects off of drugs too, usually that's easy to see. Especially if it's, you know, on the bottle 90% of the time, it'll say the side effects. And you can even Google it, too. And obviously, if one of the side effects are hallucinations, well, then you would talk to your doctor and be like, hey, one of the side effects I'm having is this, and that's, you know, what they are warning on the bottle, so should I try, try not, or switch, you know, to a different medication to see if that fixes the problem. But yeah, a lot of people are quick to judge, even like, even on the internet, right? YouTube, TikTok, just social media. Like, you know how when people are on like a diet or are trying to be vegan or gluten free, you get like the person in the back seat. all of a sudden they're like health professionals and know what's the best for you, but it's kind of the same thing when it comes to like psychology matters. You got people that didn't, you know, go to school for that and aren't professionals that'll just say, oh, it's this, it's that. Like, you can't just say someone's schizophrenic because they have hallucinations. A, that's not your job. And B, that's very dangerous to do. And kind of like, just making that person feel invalid. So, um, those of you who are not qualified professionals, sit the fuck down and, um, mind your business because it's kind of rude. I don't tell you or I don't tell, you know, people that they need to do A, B, and C because I think it's good for them. Even though I don't know anything about whatever the subject is, for example. So, yeah, psychologists, psychiatrists, psych, yeah, psychiatrists, sorry, therapists, too, they're not open, again, scientific method, and they're all about, like, facts and stuff, but I think until, and I'm not saying all of them, like, for me, example, I was like that, right? I was like, science, 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 if there's no proof, it's fake, or whatever, until my ass got dragged out of my bed by my ankle and, you know, had a what the fuck moment that I could not explain. That's pretty much what got me into the paranormal because I wanted answers, I wanted answers now. So I think the problem is until a lot of these people have a what the fuck moment that they cannot explain whether there's evidence or not they're gonna believe what they want to believe and it's not our job to convince somebody because you can say what you want but at the end of the day that person's gonna believe what they want especially if you know they've been raised to believe a certain thing and to like another problem like growing up we are always taught that you know imaginary friends are fake and not to believe in paranormal because it's fake so then we grow up with blinders and you know that just causes a problem in the future especially when then you start having paranormal experiences Because then you're just afraid to be like, hey, I experienced this. And then if you have other people, you know, that were like your parents or whatever growing up and are quick to tell you that it's all fake, well, you're not going to want to tell anybody, right? And more than likely, especially when you're trying to debunk things, you're, or even if you're not trying to debunk things, 
and you're just seeing a psychologist or psychiatrist or therapist and you're trying to like get answers but then you're afraid to tell them the truth because of you know what they would say or do or being afraid of being locked up in like an insane asylum or I don't know we call them things anymore I don't know a mental health clinic People are going to be kind of scared to tell the truth about that stuff because, like, no one's really open. Yeah, so it's it's kind of a big problem in the psych community. But, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just going to end it here. It's kind of like a ramble, really. Uh, but, yeah, if you made it through this video... Congratulations. I don't know how you did it. Just talking about it was kind of rough because, I mean, none of these videos are really scripted. I kind of just wing it and hope for the best and hope I don't just ramble on and on and on and repeat everything. So, thank you guys for watching. Peace out.